Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25. And once again, we're starting out the season here at Wellington's Pub and Grill. So thank you to Julie and the crew here at Wellington's for having us back and for sponsoring the show. Tom Sawyer joining us once again. And as we said, this is, I think you've done this show every year that you've been the head coach at Winona State and uh, all the time that we've been at HBC. Yeah, it's been awesome, you know, to, to come out and have an opportunity to, one, get our staff out, but also, you know, to have an opportunity for our players to get in front of a camera and, and share their story. Um, that you guys tell so well and, and especially to come down here uh, to Wellington's with Julie is always awesome and, and she's been so good to our program for all these years so very excited to be back here at Wellington's. All right and before we start things out we just have to say congratulations to you because this past Friday you were inducted into your high school hall of fame in Barron, Wisconsin. Uh, what was that like to get that call and, and to head over there this week, past well, weekend? Well it's just kind of one of those cool things you know you, you had such a great experience when I was at high school in Barron, Wisconsin and it was you know, to see my old coaches and some teammates and those kind of things, it's fun. It was a quick reunion. We were up and back that day, but my family and, and some friends were there and just a share of a small time in your life, but a really important one, especially as an educator. It was fun to be back and have a chance to say thank you to the people in the Barron community. Now, from what I found out uh, from your high school days, uh, you were a 10-time letter winner in uh, football, of course, baseball, of course, but also basketball. How was Tom Sawyer the basketball player? Well, I was like a bull in a china shop as a point guard. <laughs> and uh, so I'd take it down the lane and pit, pit, throw it to guys who could score. Um, it, that's what I did. We were a pressure team. Uh, it was really fun. Um, but, yeah, I started point guard for three, three years. And uh, uh, we just had a really good group of guys. We won a lot of ball games, scored a lot of points. And uh, so it was really, really a lot of fun uh, back in those days. All right. Well, congratulations again to you on that. Thank that you. was a great honor. Uh, let's talk a little bit, uh, kind of wrap up last season, because uh, you guys had a great year, uh, made the NCAA playoffs, had your first home playoff game since 2004, 8-0 uh, start. Uh, tell us a little bit about what was so special about last season. Well, I think that it kind of started the year before that. Uh, we, we got some momentum going. We knew we had a lot of good players. Um, you know, we were in some close ball games. Uh, but then it really it started to build, and we got on that streak and won eight in a row uh, before we went over to Mankato. And uh, uh, we just started gelling as a team. Our defense led us. Uh, they, were, they really had it going. We had some dynamic players on that team, and uh, we created a lot of turnovers and, and won the field battle. Um, but then our offense started started really doing well too, and then our quarterback got hurt, and we brought in a freshman, uh, Owen Burke, who's, who did a great job and won the three games that he started. So um, we really started to roll um, through, and then Javian got hurt, you know, a running back. So we, we had enough depth to be able to continue to win, and uh, took us all the way into the tournament. And uh, we thought, um, you know, playing against Texas A&M Commerce, that you're playing against the nation's best, mm -hmm. and uh, obviously it turned out to be, but. Uh, we were close, and uh, it, it was fun to be to have the season that we did. Now, you kind of mentioned it. Unfortunately, you, you lost to Commerce, but they went on to win the national championship. Does that matter that they went on to win and you were right with, there with them in that first half? Yeah, we kind of describe it as, you know, we had our, had our hands on the champion, or had our hands on the trophy. So, um, you know, get through that game, go out to Central Washington, back to Mankato, maybe we could have done the same thing. But, you know, it is what it is. That's the cool part about sports. You actually got to go play the game and, and find out who's the best that day. And they were the best that day, although we you know, held them to the half the points that they scored uh, all year long and, and on an average. Um, and you know, we had a couple turnovers, and that's part of the game, and we couldn't overcome it. Uh, but yes, to, to see, the, see what it looks like to have the national championship or the national champion in Winona um, gives our guys, I think it gives our community an idea that we're not very far away um, if all things go right. All right, let's talk a little bit about this year's team then. We'll get into the specifics with your coordinators in just a minute, but uh, you've had the spring game, you've had a couple of scrimmages, and of course training camp. What have you seen from your team uh, in those first couple of outings? Well, I think our young leadership is great, and I know I sent you a note on our captains. Mm -hmm. we got great leadership uh, at all levels, um, all parts of our program. Um, guys work their tail off. You know, when you get you, that close like we did last year, you know, our off season was really good. Um, you know, we did have some coaching changes, but, but, you know, we just keep getting better that way too. So it's, it's finding ways to continue to grow. And I think we did that really well. Um, but our intensity is up. Um, they're excited to play football again. And I think our camp was great. We don't have anybody hurt. And uh, so right now we're going into the first, first game with, uh, you know, with a full cupboard of guys, and, and we're pretty excited about it. Obviously, you have to cycle through players. That's just the life of college athletics. Um, but sometimes you have position set, sometimes there's battles for it. And you said that there are a lot of battles mm -hmm. uh, during the uh, spring camp this year. Do you prefer to have an idea of who's going to be in those starting roles before, or do you like to see the battles? Well, I love the battles. You know, <laughs> it makes everybody better. Uh, anytime that guys are competing for a job, they come to work every day and, and try to prove that they're the guy. And uh, not only to themselves and their teammates, but to us as well. So 
Um, we still have that. We still have some competition going almost every day and at all levels and you know, trying to get guys to really step up and step out of their comfort zone and, and start making plays that, that they hadn't done in the past. So we started to see that uh, through the spring and then now this camp, uh, some young kids are starting to be more consistent. Uh, we knew they were a good talent, but uh, they got to know what they're doing, and they're finally starting to figure that out. All right, we are going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. When we come back, we'll talk offense. Cam Keller will join us right after this. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub & Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See? We told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. Cameron Keller now joins us, uh, offensive coordinator. Thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, let's start off by talking about the quarterback. As uh, Coach Sawyer was saying, uh, you know, you have Owen Burke coming in um, as the starter for, for week one. This is going to be the third different <coughs> starter that you've had. Obviously, Jack Nelson, who's back behind, who's now... Uh, a coach on the staff was wrapping up his career, and then last year, uh, Darren Bankin got his shot as a senior, and now starting out the year with another quarterback. How difficult is that to have that much change in, in one position? I, I think you hit on it in the last segment with Coach Sawyer that you know in college football there's there's going to be turnover, and that's that's expected. Um, I think for us this year is probably a little bit of an easier transition than it was last year, just because mm -hmm. Owen started three games last year, sure. and so. For us, he had the whole spring to establish himself as the, the guy that was going to be in charge of the offense, and the guys really looked to him this summer. And so I, I think this year was probably a lot easier transition than last year with Darren. Um, there was still a lot of unknowns last year with Darren. He'd never started a game. How was he going to react when the lights flipped on and there's 6,000 people in the stands? But uh, you know, I think with Owen, it's been a, a much smoother transition just from his actual game experience. Right. You know, I think one of the things, Cam, is we talk about balance in our offense. Um, how do you guys think, with you and Joe talking about it, how we're going to go on the field, what, what are your thoughts about trying to keep us balanced or will we be able to? Well, I think the biggest thing for us is trying to get the ball in as many of our playmakers' hands as possible. And right now we have you know, probably the best, situ the best situation we've had since I've been here in that we've got nine of the 11 guys coming back have started football games for us. And so that experience brings a lot of knowledge in the system, and it's kind of allowed us to expand our playbook this Ball camp, and we've tried some things that we probably wouldn't have been able to try in the past. Um, but the ability to spread the ball around is going to be something that is going to be a little bit of a challenge because we got everybody that uh, can touch it is going to be dynamic with it, and everybody wants it. And so <laughs> we got to make sure that we can, uh, you know, continue to put it in those people's hands, and that they're going to be be able to make the plays that we want them to make. Are you going to have enough plays for all the playmakers uh, to, to be satisfied this year? We're going to do everything we can. <laughs> not enough football. Yeah. No, not at all. <laughs> not enough to go around. Let's try to break down a little bit, and we'll start with the running back position. As Coach Sawyer said, you had J.B. and Roebuck, and you have Eric Berth back there, but you also have other uh, playmakers. Uh, talk about your, your depth at running back. Well, you know, Landon played a lot last year, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Sam Santiago Lloyd played as a, a true freshman. And so when you've got four guys that at any given moment could go out on the field and you don't miss a step from one to the next, uh, it really allows us to, to do some good things because that position probably more than any other position gets banged up a lot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you see it in the NFL where, you know, they, they tend to turn them over pretty quick. And for us to have four solid ones right now, and, and we've even got a, a true freshman who's had a tremendous fall camp in Justin Evans. And so, you know, we're really excited about that position and just the, the amount of experience and the talent they have. Okay. You know, talking about those running backs, Kim, uh, talk a little bit more about one Eric Berth and, and then Javian because Javian – only started five games last year as a first team all conference kid. What what makes those two guys such a dynamic duo as the older guys? Yeah, well I think what we've got is we've got a bigger back in Eric um, who's able to stick it in there on the, the third and short stuff and he's done a really nice job over the last couple of years of uh, doing you know, knowing where he's supposed to be in the pass protections and taking care of that part of his game which was a little bit lacking his first couple of years. Um, and Javian has the breakaway speed that when he gets the ball outside of the box, there's a chance he's gonna go. And so those two really have given us kind of the thunder and lightning, although Javian's not small. Right. And I think that's something that we've really been able to take advantage of with, with Jay, especially when he gets outside. And, and Eric still has some speed, not, not quite what he had when he was in high school, but he, he uh, at 235 pounds, can still move pretty well. All right, uh, wide receivers, obviously Isaiah Franzen is the lead uh, coming back. He had uh, seven touchdowns, and then there were seven other touchdowns scored by your receivers uh, combined for the rest of the team. Um, you do have other playmakers there mm -hmm. back there, so how do you feel about the wide receiver court? 
Well, I mean, we you know, we talk every day in practice that you know one of them steps up and does some things to surprise us or you know amaze us. Uh, Connor Schultz has had a tremendous fall camp. He's a kid that's played a lot of football for us already and still has two years left. Uh, and then you throw Jake Ballou and Tanner Grant in there. I mean, Jake's already one of the best returners in the country. Uh, to be able to get the ball in his hands, he's he's no different on offense when he has it in his hands. So um, we've seen some really good things from them. Elliot Cox is one of our best leaders in that group. Uh, and Tyler Anderson is a young kid that um, started a lot of football games for us last year as a redshirt freshman. but. Um, you know, has really kind of come into his own this fall camp. And then Tyler Knudsen is going to be uh, a redshirt freshman that's going to travel for us this year, and we're really excited about his upside. So, yeah, it, that's that's a group that, um, you know, depth-wise is not going to be an issue for us. All right, and it doesn't go anywhere without the offensive line. Now talk about your returners there. Well, we're, turn, we're returning four of the five starters. And, you know, the one the one change will be a right guard with Hunter Hoshite. Um, and, you know, Hunter's had a great fall camp. We were just talking the other day, Coach and I, with mm-hmm. Joe about, you know, we – I haven't really even mentioned his name, and he just we, he, he stepped in, and he knows where he's going on every play. Um, Colin Valley's been one of the best old linemen that I've seen since I've been here. Uh, really consistent, moves really well, and because we've moved him to center now, we're able to do some different things and some schemes that I think are really going to give some defenses troubles, um, just the way that they're taught to read guards and those things. So we're really excited about that group up front. Carter Berlin's kind of coming into his own. He's only going to be a redshirt sophomore, but he started 11 games for us last year. And Max Mueller coming back as a senior, so I think we're we're really excited about that group. We're probably as excited about the freshmen that we have um, because we've got a big O line class with that freshman group. Uh, hopefully, we don't have to use them this year, but I, you know I think there's a couple of them that if we do have to go to those guys, I think they'll be able to step on the field and play as well. All right, thank you for joining us here, and uh, good luck me. this season. We're going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. Brian Kirk will join us to talk about defense right after this. Elevate your HBC TV experience with the latest technology to hit your whole home entertainment system. Record up to six programs simultaneously and save up to 350 hours of your favorite shows. Pause a program you're watching in one room and pick right up where you left off in another. Video on demand, wireless set-top boxes and mobile device streaming, apps including Alexa, Netflix, YouTube, and more. Call 888-474-9995 to learn more or visit hbci.com forward slash elevate today. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on HBC TV 25. Time now to talk defense with Brian Curtin. Thank you for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Uh, the defense for the Warriors has been uh, incredible over the past couple of seasons. Tops in the NSIC. I know Coach Sawyer talks about it all the time. Um, how do you keep that going uh, this year? Just keep doing the same things we do. You know, we keep talking about the process and, and, and the standard that we set, and we try to hold our guys to that and work to that standard every day. You know, I think the, one of the biggest things, Brian, is just the tempo in which our guys play. How have you guys, your coaching staff, and put that into place where to get our guys to to play with that kind of energy all the time? Well, some of the, we, I think we have some energy guys in the group. You know, some guys that just go and go and go, but um, we drive them pretty hard. You know, you hear us down there all the time. It's never fast enough. We want to be faster. We're trying to get guys going. Um, it's just a, a mentality and a culture that we've tried to create through the years, and and uh, that's not going to change. Let's talk about that front line uh, coming back. I know you got a lot of playmakers uh, that are there. Uh, talk about uh, the pressure that you're going to put on the quarterback. We got some good players up front. I know, uh, and, and Coach o- Coach Ulrich's got a great group to work with. You know, we have two of our four captains are, are from that group, and I think that says a lot about you know the way they're respected and how they do things. But uh, Michael Gomez and, and Mike Ferrante, the Mikes, they're going to they're going to lead our football team. All right, and then talk about uh, the linebacker core. Uh, I know you got some uh, guys returning from that. Nick Bridgen uh, kind of leading that group. Yep, and Nick is, you know, he's been a good player for us for quite a while. Um, does Brings a lot of things to the table for us just with his, his size and speed. Um, you know, uh, David Smith played a lot of football last year for us, was able to, <coughs> able to do a really good job. He's having a great camp. Um, and then we have some guys, you know, back from injury. Um, in uh, Aiken Major, Noel Winch. Um, Trey Telez and all those guys that, that played at the, the strong side linebacker last year for us. Um, so there's some good competition there with Carter Duxbury and Trey Telez and Josh Hawes. You know, you talk about, a lot of people talk about, it seems like our players are coming from everywhere in our blitz package, but a lot of times it's just the way we set up our rush. But what, what do you try to do to create that, you know, the chaos in there that, uh, that teams really seem to have trouble with? We just, the, the last couple of years, we've kind of just decided, you know, movement was our friend. Um, pressure was something that we were always trying to do, um, just trying to bring 
different combinations. We, we have disguises and things like that that we try to do to try to make it look like we're bringing pressure and then, then not bring pressure. Um, but, uh, you know, we get in third down, things like, you know, we get in those third and longs. You know, we're not bringing as many people as it looks like we're bringing, but if you bring a guy in, the guy that's responsible for him in man coverage is going to go to him. Mm-hmm. If he's blocking someone else, they just keep going so we can always have one more than they got. We didn't talk about the secondary yet, but uh, Cam Gavin, Cole Moncton, or Mario Gale, all names that uh, uh, played some uh, good time last year. Uh, what do you expect from them this year? And who else is, is there? Uh, we got we got some new faces, definitely. Um, but uh, Cam Gavin's healthy now. He only missed some of the end of the season last year, which then helped set us up this year because when he got in, when he was injured, then Romario got to play and, and do some really good things. I think he was the MVP of the game. Um, they gave that uh, sledgehammer away up at uh, um, Southwest State. So um, he you know, got some good experience there, played in the playoff game against probably the best offense in the country. So uh, that, you know, it wasn't great that Cam couldn't play, but it sets us up for the future. And the guy had to step in and play and did some really good things. Um, Cole mocked and steady. Um, he's a he's a better athlete than people give him credit for. Um, he's he does he does everything right and he has athletic ability. Um, and then Isaiah Hall, who was our nickel last year, um, will be the starting corner on the other side. Who's uh, one of our kick return guys? Um, extremely fast, quick. Um, had a couple interceptions last year in, the, in our nickel defense. Now he'll move to the starting corner. You know, Brian talked about you know depth in our defense. We the guys play that fast, that hard. You know, we seem to rotate a lot of guys when we can. How important is the depth, and where do you think our depth is going into the small? It, it's pretty good. I mean, I think, you know, it, it's critical, um, you know, because the goal is to play 15 games. And in our league, it's a big physical league. You can't walk out there and play 11 guys every down. I mean, just you can't do it. Um, it's been, you know, the one position where we don't rotate a whole lot or play a lot of different guys in the secondary. Those four guys, when healthy, play about every snap of the game. We bring in a fifth in our nickel package. But... Um, there's a constant rotation up front with the defensive line. Um, we try to spell our, our backers as much as we can because we know it's a long season. And uh, to be fast and play as many snaps, you know, with some of the tempo offense that we get and things like that, that, that we got to have some depth or um, we'll wear down at the end of the year. And I think that's something we saw in the past um, and really made a big effort to change that the last two years. I know the defense kind of lost a lot of players to graduation. You had uh, Andrew Spencer, uh, Luke Teague, uh, Adonis Brown. Uh, people may look at that and, and say, well, they, they lost a lot. Uh, what, what, are, what are we going to see from the, uh, the Warriors to kind of fill those gaps this year? It's, it's part of college football. You're going to graduate people, and, and that's how it's supposed to work. And um, we, For us, we didn't lose a lot of people. It was mm-hmm. kind of who we lost. We yeah. lost some good football players in there for sure. But uh, we were able to get that experience last year and being able to play more people, not just playing 11 people the whole year you start to ease people in. You know, the last couple of years we've been kind of lucky enough that the guy that came in as the nickelback in the secondary then was the starting corner of the next year. Or, you know, I think we brought Cole in as a corner and moved some of the nickel. But now, you know, the last two years he's been our starting corner. So we start to find ways by playing people maybe to ease some of that transition because now we have people that have had some experience. All right. Playing. Well, thank you, and uh, good luck at Wayne this week. Thank you. All right, we're going to take another break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. We'll talk special teams when we come back. Rocco D'Amico will join us right after this. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub & Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, we told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. I do all my shoe shopping at Rogan's because I know I'll find what I'm looking for and save. You can count on great service, a huge selection, the best name brands, the second pair is half price, and one more thing, a choice in how to save. I can get my second pair half price now, or just save my receipt and come back anytime and get my next pair at half price. Rogan's makes savings easy. Selection, service, name brands, and the second pair is half price. Visit online at roganshoes.com. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here from Wellington's Pub and Grill and HBC TV 25, now joined by Rocco D'Amico, who's in charge of special teams, and you're the, the new face among the group, so why don't you introduce it yourself to everybody? Yeah, uh, Rocco D'Amico. Um I'm at a, actually Massachusetts, Massachusetts guy, East Coaster, spent the last four years in New Jersey. 
uh, at Rutgers University and a couple other stops along the East Coast. So first time out here in the Midwest, uh, upper Midwest, and uh, enjoying it so far. How did you find out about Winona State? Uh, so Coach and I have a mutual connection, A.J. Blazik, who's mm -hmm. the offensive line coach right now, currently at, um, currently at Rutgers. Uh, Brett Holinka, uh, I actually worked with too. So a couple mutual connections there. Uh, got connected with Coach and was lucky enough to get brought on board. All right. Well, I, I always said it, you know, with AJ, it's not necessarily a good recommendation. <laughs> he, he wrecked this show a couple of times to make sure he gets a copy of this. Um, but first of all, I want to say congratulations. Uh, he had twin babies um, just a couple days ago, yeah. so he's been pretty busy here. But, uh, you know, talk about the importance of special teams uh, here, with, not only with us, but um, at all levels of football. Yeah, you know, uh, the game of field position, more than anything, is the most important, most important part of our game. Uh, and a lot of people preach it, not a lot of people live it, um, you know, but, uh, you know, I feel like we do a really good job here spending quality time on special teams and, uh, and making our players educated in the fact that these phases are a lot of times going to dictate our fate. Uh, you know, so we want to, you know, build a culture of special teams of guys who are going to work hard, uh, protect the football, be precise in their jobs. And, uh, and swarm and finish the football. So uh, and I think we're doing a good job of that so far. All right, we were talking about battles uh, during camps, and one of those is going to be place kicker. Yeah. Uh, Carter McCauley uh, graduated, was an all-time great here at Winona State. And I was telling Coach, you know, I, I thought I knew where the direction you guys were going to go for place kicking. Maybe that's not the case. Yeah, you know, uh, right now you know, we had some good competition in camp. Uh, Carter was obviously a, a big loss. We went out and uh, recruited a kid actually at West Coast or so. Got a guy from the opposite coast there coming in. Uh, Paul Ortiz is doing a heck of a job right now. He's got uh, he's got some unbelievable leg talent. Uh, he's got to work on his consistency and continue to come around. Uh, you know, Nate Enrich, another guy doing a, a heck of a job right now. And as those guys continue to develop and push each other, it's only going to make us better. Uh, you know, it's really kind of the same in a couple of specialist positions for us right now. Uh, you know, we're only going to get better the more competition we have. You know, those, those guys can't get comfortable. They know their job's going to be on the line week to week. As long as we keep pushing each other, it's going to make us all better as a program. You know, let's talk just briefly about uh, uh, first Mike Russell, a Winona kid, is mm -hmm. in fourth year punting, and he's really done a nice job. So talk about him real quick, and then let's talk about those return specialists mm -hmm. we yeah. have because we got some talent there. Yeah, we absolutely do. Uh, Mike Russell's done an incredible job this camp. Um, you know, he's pretty inconsistent in the, fall, uh, in the spring, excuse me. Uh, and, you know, he was getting used to some new things, some new things of uh, his alignment, his approach, his steps, all that, you know, that stuff was different because we changed where he lines up. Uh, as he got more comfortable, uh, he, he's just, you know, he's kicked the heck out of the ball. Uh, he's done a really nice job. He's going to, he's going to be a weapon for us as long as he can stay consistent. Uh, he can win the game in between his ears more than anything. Uh, you know, that six inches between his ears is going to be critical. Uh, but he's doing a heck of a job. He really is. And, and he's going to be a weapon for us as long as he can stay consistent. Coach talked about the, the kick returners, the punt returners. You have to smile when you see what you have yeah. uh, back there, especially uh, Jake Blue, who's I think comes into the season third all-time at Winona State in punt return yardage, and yeah. he's a junior. So th that's just yeah. crazy in itself. Yeah, that, that's always great to walk into a situation like that. Uh, those guys, him and Isaiah, both have done a tre tremendous job. And they're both tough, high-character kids who love football. Uh, I think that's really the bottom line with those guys uh, and their dynamic playmaking ability. Uh, and, and Jake's going to be, uh, you know, I, I tell the guys, and I joke with the guys, but I'm serious too, you know, Jake is my favorite football player on this team. I, I, I do have a favorite. The punt returner is my favorite player on the team. Uh, it takes a lot of toughness to stand there with your chin in the air with 11 guys barreling down the field at you. So uh, yeah, I tell the guys that all the time. We're going to put – other 10 guys on that punt block, punt return unit who can protect them. Uh, and I tell them all the time, you're going to protect my favorite player. Uh, we're going to make plays, and uh, you know, we need guys who are going to be willing to strain and really work to protect that guy. You know, Isaiah, same on kick return. You know, we need guys who are going to uh, you know, take pride in protecting those guys, knowing that we have an absolute weapon uh, and dynamic playmakers who can change the complexion of a football game uh, within an instant. So you know, that's, that's what we're trying to build with those return units. Well, I think what, the last question I have for you, Coach, is, is as you worked with the special teams for four years in the Big Ten, um, how is it different in preparation or is it similar? Um, a lot of people ask that. How is Division Two that much different than Division I? Uh, give us your perspective now working with both for quite a, quite a few years. Yeah, I, I, I see no difference in the preparation. Uh, the preparation is the same. Uh, you approach uh, you approach it like you're in the big time, and we are. Uh, you know, this is the 
best conference in Division II football. Uh, it's extremely competitive. So every time we line up out there, we're going to put our best 11 guys on the football field. We're going to prepare uh, like it's you know, it's the only game. It's the only one we got. It's, it was you know, our goal to be 1-0 and at the end of that football game. Uh, the preparation doesn't change. Uh, you know, does the speed change a little bit? Absolutely. You know, uh, but there are some phenomenal players in this league, and uh, luckily some of them are in our program, uh, and that's that's what's really exciting. All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining us here today, and again, welcome to Winona State. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, we're going to take a break here on the Tom Sawyer Show. Back to wrap it up in just a moment to talk about the game against Wayne State. With so many new items on the menu at Wellington's Pub and Grill, you're in for some tough decisions. Six different salads, homemade soups, huge wraps, juicy steaks, the Wells' own smokehouse ribs, and as always, the best burgers in town. See, we told you it wasn't going to be easy. Log on to wellingtonspubandgrill.com for daily lunch and evening specials. With so many choices for lunch and dinner, you can never come to this well too often. And welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show, back to wrap things up. And uh, before we talk about the Wayne State game, I, I just want to talk a little bit about the players from last year that got a look at the NFL. That's Zach Olstead and Andrew Spencer. When, when you have players like that that go, and you, you, we were talking off camera about all the other players uh, in past years that have gotten looks at camp, what does that do for your program to be able to point to these guys and say, now look, if you work hard, you could have a, a shot at playing after college? Yeah, I think both of those guys are great examples. Uh, plus, it's, uh, you know, they work their way there. Um, you know, they came in, they redshirted, they do all that, then they find their way um, talking to an agent, and all of a sudden they're in a camp. And um, I, I think that's a great model for our current players. Uh, but the biggest thing is when you see, you know, like Zach Olstead playing on TV, um, you know, for the Buffalo Bills, and, and a kid that's coming out of high school that we're recruiting right now, and they see, well, they got guys playing in the pros, because um, almost, almost every kid um, coming out of high school thinks they're going to play in the NFL. I mean, that's what their dream is. That's what they're going to do. They're going to change their life by going to the NFL. Um, and they, they don't realize that that chance is so slim. Um, but kids do it, and mm -hmm. they do make it. And they do make it not only from our program, but other programs in the Northern Sun. So it it's a, elevates our recruiting. Um, it's a kind of a cool thing. Uh, but more importantly, if you're good enough, they'll find you at the Division II level, and, uh, and we can get you on a field if you're good enough. All right, so you're just days away from playing. You start the, the season on a Thursday on the road at Wayne State. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you expect from the Wayne State team. Well, we, they got a lot of kids back on their defense. Uh, you know, Coach McLaughlin's been there a long time. He's a good friend of mine, and they, they are always hard-nosed kids. Uh, they, play, they play physical football. Um, I think they got seven starters back on their defense, um, and they got one of the best uh, wide receivers um, in, the, in the league, Nate Rogers. So they do have some weapons, uh, but I think they're, they're leaning on their defense from last year. And, uh, and, and building on that. Uh, we just need to go down there and like Coach Rockwood talked about, you know, we, we got to go down there and, and handle the special teams, uh, win that battle, uh, and then just get after them and score and be explosive offensively. I, I think if we can move the football and, and put the ball in the end zone against that defense, um, that'll be tough for them. All right, uh, as we were kind of talking about camp and, and the, the scrimmages and, and that sort of thing, you don't necessarily have to name names, but how many people kind of played their way into the starting lineup from what you saw in the scrimmages over the past couple of weeks? Yeah, I'd say we have two or three kids um, that really have, uh, you know, we had a lot of kids back. You know, mm -hmm. we only had, you know, a few seniors last year, and, and you know, we didn't lose that many as you talked with the coaches. But um, I, I think we saw some surprise out of, of quite a few kids. It's really easy to see the kids that spent the time at it in the summer and those who didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have very few that don't anymore. Uh, but the kids who did um, are here and they're ready to play. And, and that's the depth that we were talking about with, with Coach Curtin, is we know now that the 58 kids we're putting on that bus uh, are going to help us win a football game, and, and we can count on them. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, good luck at Wayne this week. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching us. Thank you to everybody here at Wellingtons, including Julie and the crew, for uh, having us here and uh, sponsoring the Tom Sawyer Show. We'll see you next week here on HBC TV 25.